This is the first ever Omen X laptop for gamers that go to extremes. Gear up with a machine designed for total domination and engineered for gaming in stunning 4K. Equipped with the latest Intel Core processors, it gives you the power to be relentless. With a 17.3 inch diagonal screen and desktop class graphics, you get maximum performance to be victorious anywhere. With multiple fans and large exhaust vents, heat is transferred away from critical components for dynamic overclocking. Ramp up boot times, game loading, and overall system responsiveness with optional RAID 0 SSD configurability. An RGB LED backlit mechanical keyboard lets you program each individually lit key to create customized key maps that switch seamlessly between games. With two and a half millimeter travel and in-key rollover, you can take out your competition with more accuracy and precision. Designed for extreme immersion, DTS Headphone X technology comes built in for surround sound experience that puts you right in the middle of the action. With the addition of a VR headset, gamers can step inside a completely immersive world for an elevated gaming experience. Single panel access to key components makes serviceability and upgrading easy so you won't be sidelined or held back on your road to supremacy. It has a brushed aluminum finish on an armor-like chassis. A jet fighter-like construction with hidden lift hinges ensures you're always at the ready. And with striking lighting effects and see-through window to components, others will know too. Unleash your fiercest gameplay anywhere with the extreme performance of the new Omen X laptop. and stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. Everybody, welcome to another edition of the ESL India Premiership 2018 Summer Seasons Masters League. Though now the match is already done for the summer season in the Masters League, there were a couple of matches which were uh, uh, remaining there. So we thought, why not bring the joy to you guys? Uh, and considering it's an off for uh, us, when we say, uh, when I say us, I mean, I mean Northern Gaming and ESL India, who are presenting this amazing tournament to you, which also has been uh, brought to you by Omen by HP, HyperX, and Intel. So since it's an off, it's just me and you. So let's get done with the games. Same as usual, CR best of five, CSGO and uh, Dota 2. Beginning the Clash Royale best of five game, we have a game between uh, two very interesting players. Uh, let's start off uh, with uh, Deepak Mehudi Mehta. All right, so now that we have seen Mehu D, who sadly this time around we won't be seeing in the fall season because he's going to be relegated to the Challenger League, we are going to see a match of his against none other than the 2017 winter season finale, Mukul 8-Bit Archer. <laughs> All 
All right, so now since the players are ready, the games are ready, why don't we just take a quick sneak peek into what went on there? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the East India Premiership's uh, daily stream of Clash Royale. This is Manoj Super Golda casting for you. And today we're watching an, a quite a bit of old... It, 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 it's an old match. Like, the only reason we're playing it now is because we wanted everybody to see what was going on and we couldn't air it back then because it happened off stream. But uh, enough about that. We have Mehudi and Mukul playing against each other today. Looks like uh, Mukul is playing a three musketeer deck. I wonder if he has... A fast moving card like a prince or a hog. Ah, there we go. He has a hog as well. So it's a it's a fast hog cycle deck with a three musketeer kicker to pull, like pull in the big guns once uh, double exit hit. And uh, Mehudi is playing a building based deck. So he has a barbarian hut. He has a furnace as well as a crossbow. So I guess he basically slowly wants to whittle Mukul down with lots and lots of units and damage from afar. Mukul, on the other hand, has uh, other plans for this game and it looks like he he is in the better position right now. Uh, we are a minute into the game. Mukul has successfully pushed his hog onto Mehudi's tower, bringing it down to 1742 HP. And thanks to this hunter coming out from Mukul right there, who does a lot of damage up close as well as a lot of damage in, in a range spread. Yeah, I, I don't see Mehudi's pushes reaching Mukul's towers anytime soon. And another hog from Mukul on the left has brought uh, Mehudi's tower down to 686 HP. We're just a minute and a half into the game and Mukul is already looking insanely strong in this matchup. I, I, we haven't seen Mehudi use his uh, log or crossbow to any good effect yet, but we do see Mukul just putting on the pressure. Like He's not even giving Mehudi enough time to put down his crossbow. So we are about to enter the last minute, which is going to be double elixir time. Expertly placed by Mukul, that ice golem has basically saved his tower from a lot of damage. But I wonder how he's going to... Ah, uh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that placement timing right there. He put in the three musketeers and then saved them with a skeleton card. Like three skeletons enough to distract uh, the bandit's uh, dash damage. And luckily for him, that's uh, mostly enough. And have you seen this, uh, people? Like, do you see how good of a player Mukul is? That like, crossbow has been alive for most of its time, and it has not hit the tower. Like Mukul has been expertly placing cards here and there just to distract. Uh, and as soon as I say that, he misses a fireball. Wow, that's just sad. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Again, Mukul has to be really careful in stopping this crossbow. And it's slowly melting his tower. Okay, over time, that crossbow has enough time to destroy Mukul's tower and wow! Three seconds into overtime, we see the tables have turned. And uh, Mehudi just stole this matchup out of nowhere. Like, how is that even possible? Like, uh, Mehudi has, uh, like, Mukul has been slowly, what do you say? Whittling down uh, Mehudi's tower bit by bit uh, with his hog, with his fireball. But that last crossbow coming out from Mehudi just stole the game. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're back to game two and uh, looks like Mehudi has decided to switch up his deck a lot. We see a golem, we see a dark prince, we see a rocket. So, and uh, Mukul, however, um, uh, chose to stay with his own deck. Okay, so... I know three musketeers are a really powerful card, but yeah, thanks to that rocket, I, I don't know what uh, Mehudi thought of when choosing this deck, but he did take a really, really, really good decision because we just saw his uh, two of his three musketeers just go down. But on the other hand, this hog coming out from Mukul had uh, absolutely no proper answer coming out from Mehudi. So managed to reach the tower, hit it like four times, bringing it down to 1658 HP and his own Dark Prince, Mehudi's own Dark Prince, has not managed to reach Mukul's tower. Hey, but that's okay, that's okay. I believe in this matchup, in this particular tech matchup at least, Mehudi will gain the upper hand when we enter double elixir. 
But uh, the only way to find out for sure is just to wait another 40 seconds. Good tornado coming out from Mehudi right there, but unfortunately was not enough to pull the Royal Ghost to Mehudi's King Tower and activate it. Uh, two hits coming out from the Hog. Three hits coming out from the Hog onto Mehudi's tower, leaving it at 2 HP. That that tower is practically dead. I don't know why Mukul has decided to put out his three musketeers in such a challenging position. Maybe he should have put some more pressure on uh, Mehudi's left tower first before uh, letting go of his musketeer. But well, I'm not the one playing the game, so we, I can just uh, watch and comment, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. 60 seconds left, we are in double elixir. Mehudi has put out his golem for the first time. And uh, we see, we, now we get to see how Mikul, sorry, Mukul plans to, you know, counter this. Oh, th that hog, oh dude, that hog is still alive. That's his third hit, fourth hit. Four, five hits off onto the tower, bringing it down to 476 HP. Now, even if uh, Mehudi's uh, current push right now is successful, even if he uses his uh, six elixir rocket to destroy a nine elixir three musketeer card, all uh, Mukul has to do is just keep this tower alive with just enough HP to save it and uh, fireball uh, this two HP tower that Mehudi has alive. But unfortunately for Mukul, his tower has gone down. Now he uses his hog and a fireball to destroy his tower and he uses his lock to destroy the other tower. Two crowns for Mukul. And yeah, Mehudi's golem is just not quick enough to reach uh, reach Mukul's tower. And look at that. Carefully planned and executed by Mukul, he takes game two, bringing the score to one each. And yeah, this is this is some exciting stuff, man. I wonder why we didn't show this game on stream. Huh? Why are we watching this now? Well, weird things do happen. Okay. So game three, the score is tied at one each and uh, Mehudi has decided to switch out to a Lava Loon deck for game three and Mukul has taken a leaf out of uh, Mehudi's book for the first game and started using a crossbow based deck. But I wonder if he's going to use the same number of buildings as Mehudi because that doesn't really work out, right? The buildings are pretty expensive. Like You need to build a lot of elixir lead over your opponent in order to be able to do that. And usually the players in this league are not uh, are not inexperienced enough to let that happen anyway now we again see mukul slowly building out the pushes finding an opportune time to put down his crossbow which might be right now since mehudi has just let go of his uh, lava hound here yeah. and as we say that mukul has put it down the crossbow has targeted mehudi's tower and it's in some real tr real trouble he lets go of a mega minion in order to destroy the crossbow but not before it does, it does a whole ton of damage to Mehudi's tower. So now we have to divert our attention again to Mukul's tower here on the right. Mehudi's uh, lava hound has finally reached it but thanks to Mukul's uh, mega minion it has been destroyed. It looks like... I guess you could call that a successful lava hound. I mean it did do about uh, what 600 damage to the tower. Yeah, I guess that's a, that's a good enough trade. That's a good enough trade, I guess. Yeah. So, second uh, crossbow out from Mukul. Unfortunately for him, the balloon is going to destroy it. Yes, it does. But not before the crossbow again targets uh, Mehudi's tower and does 600 more damage to it. And that one last shot from the Mega Minion has brought it down to 736 HP. And uh, we've entered double elixir time. 60 seconds left on the normal clock. Mukul has started to push out his cards again, waiting for another chance to put his crossbow down. I guess now he wants to bait out uh, Mehudi's balloon first before putting the crossbow down. No, he doesn't. He just waits uh, to see that Mehudi has used his lava hound. And unfortunately... Oh, okay. So, and tries to save his crossbow using... Uh, using the tornado right there but unfortunately i don't think that's uh, happening but it, that's that's another story though the skeletons and uh, mega minion coming out from mukul have actually destroyed mehudi's tower 20 seconds left is that enough time for uh, mehudi to push his balloon or his lava hound or whatever he needs to do to destroy mukul's tower but again mukul has a trump card right there which is called a rocket 
sacrifices it to destroy the balloon. And with three seconds left, I do not see Mehudi coming back from this, and we can call the game right now. And yeah, so Mukul has won the third game again, bringing the score to 2 1 in favor of Mukul. And this is exciting, man. Like, I really have no idea why we haven't shown this game <laughs> on, on the live stream. Okay, anyway, enough about that. So we've jumped into game four. Uh, again, just to remind you guys, the score right now is 2 1 in favor of Mukul. And uh, Mehudi is, is under some real pressure right now. He has to win two more games in this series if he wants to win this matchup. While Mukul, he just has to win this one game. Or the one coming next. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a huge blunder there coming out from Mukul. Or maybe he actually expected uh, Mehudi to put down his uh, barbarian hut and made the... Doctor Strange level of decision to use the crossbow as a defensive unit. But unfortunately for him, uh, Mehudi also has his own crossbow. Which if he manages to make it survive long enough, he's going to target the tower, I'm assuming. Yes, it does. So now it does target the tower. It, it hasn't been damaged by anything yet. Uh, again, uh, Mukul has hurriedly put down his own crossbow, which targeted the bandit that Mehudi put down. And I think... Mehudi's crossbow has done a crap ton of work. Like, it brought it, brought uh, Mukul's he full HP tower, like 2534 HP to 896 HP. It was, and it was just six elixir, and he only had to place it once. Amazing gameplay coming out from Mehudi right there. Looks like he again uh, has started his combo, putting down the furnace first, letting go of the little fire spirits who not only distract uh, Mukul's units, but if they get close enough, do like suicide bomber levels of damage, because that's literally what they are. But unfortunately, I don't think uh, Mehudi is going to have such a chance again, because, I mean, he was only able to do what he did because Mukul basically screwed up on his placement of the crossbow. Again, a full HP crossbow going, uh, almost uh, playing out its entire time, has done nothing much but stop those little three barbarians that pop out of uh, Mehudi's hut. It's, it's okay though, Mukul has already rotated back to his crossbow, but we just have to wait and see if Mehudi is good enough to turn the tables once more. Mehudi uses his fireball to drop uh, the crossbow's HP down. Again, unfortunately for him, Mukul is using a very, very cheap deck. I see one elixir, skeletons, three elixir, mega minion, two elixir, ice golem, three elixir, tornado. And which is why he's able to rotate so quickly back to his crossbow again. So he's going to keep spamming those crossbows. We are going to enter uh, overtime. And yeah, looks like Mukul's uh, uh, turn is... What is happening right now? What is happening? Okay. We see a couple of furnaces coming down. We see the Mukul's crossbow targeting uh, Mehdi's barbarian hut and destroying it. And yeah, so Mukul has used his uh, six elixir rocket to destroy Mehdi's crossbow because he just can't afford the enemy's crossbow to lock onto his tower. It's at 695 HP. That's like four or five seconds of crossbow damage. And you can kiss it goodbye. And since we are in overtime, one uh, the first one to lose their tower loses. And look at that, like we see rockets and fireballs going left and right because they just, they know how dangerous it is to let your enemy's crossbow touch your tower. But I wonder how Mukul is going to stop this one. He has three skeletons to stop it, but now that uh, Mehudi's tower has targeted his own princess tower, we can say goodbye to it. There we go. Uh, almost a minute into overtime, Mehudi's uh, crossbow placement has been good. And Mukul just took a tiny little risk. Maybe he thought Mo Me like Mehudi didn't have enough elixir for his crossbow right then and there. Maybe he thought he could have waited a couple of seconds before putting down his more distracting units like his ice golem. But uh, that decision has cost him the game. And now we're sitting at an even score of two each. And we are in the final game of this best of five. Like, the pressure is on on both of these players. And we just have to keep our fingers crossed and hope uh, our favorite wins. Me, however, I have no favorite in this particular matchup. 
I used to have a favorite in the Masters League and his name was... Sorry, his name used to be the Golden Boy. But nah, not anymore. Not since he stole my headphones and is now refusing to return it because yeah, he's not uh, high enough on the leaderboard to be flown down to the, to the land finale. Oh, good push coming out from Mukul right there. Hog has managed to reach the tower, but Tornado stops it, uh, stops any more damage from happening, but not before both the Musketeer and the Hog manage to get a lot of damage onto the tower, which is sitting at 1566 HP right now. Mukul decides, eh, it's okay, I don't, I don't want to use a specific unit to destroy that Mega Minion that's coming down and is definitely going to get three hits off onto my tower. Because, and... As a result, has sacrificed a lot of HP on his start. I don't think Mukul wanted to reveal that he had that hunter right there. He, I guess, he was waiting for uh, some more uh, units from Mehudi to come down so that he can get that close range uh, damage with that multiple pellets. Look at that! Look at that! He, the Dark Prince has had a third of his HP remaining, and one shot from the hunter has basically destroyed it. I'm not sure if uh, that tornado was a good idea right there because all it did was bring the hunter closer to his units and giving him more damage onto the units. A minute left on the clock, five seconds left until we hit uh, double elixir time. Who's gonna take it? I I think I so I feel Mehudi has the better advantage on this because Mukul's using a three musketeer deck and a three musketeer hog deck and Mehudi has his uh, rocket. But if he keeps misplacing units li like that, right? He should have placed his uh, Dark Prince on the other side of the tower. And he could have avoided a lot of damage. Oh, okay. So Tornado plus Dark Prince equals dead Musketeers? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Musketeers, three Musketeers together just do too much damage uh, uh, for the Dark Prince to make it. But that's okay though. Like, lo looks like the Dark Prince was just a red herring. Mehudi has used his rocket to destroy not only the three musketeers but also the royal ghost that was accompanying them and uh, this golem ha his golem actually destroyed Mughal's tower before uh, before it even lost half his hp and five seconds left i do not think uh, Mukul has enough time to make it yet yeah. Mukul has basically just given up and all the damage coming out from mehudi has given the, uh, given him a convincing three crown victory over Mukul. and wow that, that was actually some good gameplay right there like I actually wish most of the games on the Premiership were as back and forth and exciting and as varied in deck quality as these five games that we just watched. So again, congratulations, Mehodi. You've won today and you've won with a really good convincing scoreline. It's a 3-2 victory, sure, but you've won with a 3-crown victory on the final game. So congratulations, I guess uh, we're going to go back to the studio and see what other games are coming up. We do have Dota 2 and CSGO matches coming up, so I guess uh, that's it for me. This has been Manoj Supergola casting for you. This is the ESL India Premiership's uh, Summer Season Masters League Clash Royale game. And I think if you guys have been watching for the last 50 days, you know what I'm going to go say next. You know, big shout out to our sponsors, Omen by HP, Intel, HyperX. <laughs> And of course, not been gaming and ESL India for bringing all of this esports action to you live every day at 6 p.m. And small shout out to our uh, partners and sponsors as well, Red Bull. I guess that's it for me. We're going back to the studio. Bye bye, guys. This is the first ever Omen X laptop.
for gamers that go to extremes. Gear up with a machine designed for total domination and engineered for gaming in stunning 4K. Equipped with the latest Intel Core processors, it gives you the power to be relentless. With a 17.3 inch diagonal screen and desktop class graphics, you get maximum performance to be victorious anywhere. With multiple fans and large exhaust vents, heat is transferred away from critical components for dynamic overclocking. Ramp up boot times, game loading, and overall system responsiveness with optional RAID 0 SSD configurability. An RGB LED backlit mechanical keyboard lets you program each individually lit key to create customized key maps that switch seamlessly between games. With two and a half millimeter travel and in-key rollover, you can take out your competition with more accuracy and precision. Designed for extreme immersion, DTS Headphone X technology comes built in for surround sound experience that puts you right in the middle of the action. With the addition of a VR headset, gamers can step inside a completely immersive world for an elevated gaming experience. Single panel access to key components makes serviceability and upgrading easy so you won't be sidelined or held back on your road to supremacy. It has a brushed aluminum finish on an armor-like chassis. A jet fighter-like construction with hidden lift hinges ensures you're always at the ready. And with striking lighting effects and see-through window to components, others will know too. Unleash your fiercest gameplay anywhere with the extreme performance of the new Omen X laptop. Dream without compromise on Intel Core i7. Alrighty, welcome back to the studio segment of the ESL India Premiership 2018, brought to you by Omen by HP HyperX and Intel, and presented by the lovely folks at Northern Gaming and ESL, which essentiality, in essentiality, just means me right now, off day today, still here for you guys. We have a Brutality versus SRA game in the offing when it comes to Counter Strike Global Offensive, ladies and gentlemen. Let's quickly take a look at Team Brutality first. All right, that's uh, Ankit, Venom, Panth, Rix, and Gang. It's predominantly the old and original brutality. That is before Adi came on board. And that's where the things start going spiraling. I'm just kidding. Adi is a wonderful player there. Uh, moving on, uh, the competition team, uh, Slaughter Rage Army. All 
All right. Now we know the teams having a showdown against each other. It's just a matter of time till we get to know who's the winner of this game. Let's head off into the game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ESL India Premiership, the Masters Division. And today is the game that's going to be held between SRA, that is Slaughter Rage Army, and Brutality. And we're going to be seeing for the first time in a very, very long time, India's national map, DE underscore Dust 2. Guru, he's going to be fighting off in middle against Rix. He does do a little bit of damage and it looks like it's going to be the age-old strat of trying to get mid-control. Guru getting tagged down really low, dinked through the gap in double doors and it looks like it's going to be an A split coming out. But, uh, well, Major, he's holding a short aggro and he's going to get taken down almost instantaneously. That's going to uh, you know, drop the onus on a flex on the A bomb side. but Venom is just coming up with kills, but a flex gets one, but that's all he's good for. Another rotation coming in from negative. There's two players tearing him down. He needs to find those cheeky little headshots. He's missing everything. Finally hits Foxy, but Venom is going to push him, and Venom is going to take him down. Now, last but not least is Dream in a 1v3. Doesn't have a kit, doesn't have a clue. Will the CT's QQ is the question. And a cheeky little peek coming in from A-Star just for information. Yet another that conveys the message that the player has pushed up. And A-Star is going to wide peek, waltz right in front of Dream. And pepper him with 9mm bullets from the Glock. And gets the kill. Well, 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 well. Brutality picking up that first round on the T side. But now they're going to be facing off against the anti... Well, they're going to be playing the anti-force negative with the scout... Doesn't really have a spawn for either long or B, so I think he is going to be picking mid. Let's see if he's able to. A-star has the angle, and A-star, what a shot! Glorious from A-star. Man just doesn't quit, and it is a YOLO B play. Juventa does get the kill. Guru, in the meantime, has found A-star, but Juventa is going to go pushing mid. He's going to find the Guru, but nope. The Guru has other ideas. This man is a beast among men. It brings it on to a 3v3, but, well, Brutality does have the weapons advantage. They have the positions, and Rix, he's trying to just hold off this rotation. Will they go for it is the question. The re-smoke's coming in. That's going to hold them off for a good 20 seconds. It's going to shave, be shaved off the bomb clock, and Rix is still just busy holding off that play, and Guru is going to fall back. A flex has picked up the UMP, so they're going to go for the save. That's a good call, the right call, in my opinion. Guru's going to rattle off a shot, but he needs to back off and he needs to get to safety. Does do some damage, but it's not going to be enough. A flex is going to be the only player who will be able to save that armor and that UMP. Take it in the next round and maybe do some damage, do some, well, farm up some money is the operative word. Let's see. Let's see if they are, you know able to do some damage with that UMP, get some money going for their buy round, which is going to be up next, or will a flex have to save two rounds in a row? What, my, uh, my, what I'm more curious about to see is what Brutality does in this round. And it's going to be, looks like it's going to be yet another YOLO B play. There we go, Rix. He's just holding the line. And uh, It is a B stack. There's three players towards a B. Guru ganders a peak, finds a lot of information, and Dream with that USP. Nothing else, and he does get a kill. In the meantime, MJR does fall, and Venom is able to clean up that bomb site all by his lonesome negative. In the meantime, negative and a flex. They are on the flank. Foxy with the scout. He's ready. He's itchy. He's eager. He's going to rattle off a shot towards negative. Not going to be able to land, but a flex. He's going to get found out by Rix, and that's going to leave negative all alone with the CZ. And again, he's been spotted out, and he needs to book it. But the hunt is on, like Donkey Kong. And I doubt whether Negative will be able to make his way out of this sticky situation with his life. And the answer to that is a resounding no. Juventa will get the final kill of that round. One kill to him, two to Venom, two to Rix. And that's three rounds on the board for Team Brutality. Clean as they come. Just three fatalities in the last two rounds. That means they have a decent amount of utility uh, going into this round and a decent amount of bank going into the next, so they will be able to buy for at least the next round as well. Well, everyone except Rix, but then, you know, those are the decisions you make. 
And A star, he's holding mid doors. It is gonna get smoked off, and he's still gonna manage to land that tag onto Dream as they cross. And look at Guru, he's booking it towards the pit area. He's made his way. I don't think they're aware of the fact that there's a player in pit. And Guru's gonna peek out, gets two kills. That's all that he needed to do, actually. But Venom, he's good for two as well. Even trades across the board. Two kills either way. But Venom is so frightfully low. He's down to six HP. He's gonna be the designated bomb carrier. Actually, he should be the bait. And that's what he's gonna be doing. He's gonna pick up the AWP. And he's gonna be a firm proponent of Bogdan's Law. MJR, in the meantime, he's playing from sight, waiting for Riggs to push up from a shot. Venom, he's in pit. He can actually do a lot of damage, but they have to time this well. Riggs does have, an, does have a Molotov to his name, so he can Molly sight, provided he knows the lineup. This is the new Dust2, guys. It's the first time it's being played. I doubt that the players have practiced their Molotov, but it doesn't matter. Venom with the third kill off the round. And negative, he's flashed. He's completely blind. He's naded. He has to fall back. In the meantime, Dream... He's going to be making his way in towards B-Shard, and he's going to burn to a crisp. Fresh kebab for days. Dream overestimating the amount of HP he had left in him and kind of sort of commits Jawhar while not meaning to channeling his inner Padmavat. Not wise in that situation. It was a 2v3 retake situation. Had, well, uh, Dream had a little bit of patience, he would have been able to come out on top. Guru will like should rightfully be a little pissed off with his teammates because he gave them a flying start he got a two-man spray down but then venom from nowhere the bodybuilder mr biceps himself comes out on top and gets a glorious killer flex he's gonna get pushed forward but the guru look at him he does get one kill but now the rotation will have to come and dream with the p250 spots out ricks ricks does get tagged through the door through the boxes sorry and it's down to a 4v 4v4 Foxy, though, he's holding the backstab. He's going to spot MJR. He's going to get the two kills. And now it's going to come down to Dream on the side. Foxy, he's so frightfully low. He's going to get taken down. And it's all down to Mr. Negative, but he's not going to live long because Juventa, he's going to bag himself a triple kill. Foxy with the double kill. That's the full house of frags being shared. And brutality seemed to be in cruise control. Five lightning fast rounds, and the score is 5-0. SRA need to dig deep, and there we go. Just as I talk about digging deep, the double ops come out and uh, it's going to be negative and MJR with the big green guns while the rest of the team, well, utility and M4s on the flip side. Well, Brutality have all the money, they have all the weapons, they have all the time and A-Star, he's going to take that off towards the B-bomb site. It's going to be trying to mark through the flames. It's a very difficult skill and A-Star needs to be careful. The flames will burn out in just about a second and he's being patient. Gander's a peak is not going to spray through it. I think he's trying to line up that shot. But MJR, in the meantime, does get the kill on a Foxy over towards shot. And we do have negative holding strong in mid doors. That flashbang, though. Oh, the timing just a little off on that timing. But right now, SRA don't really need to aggress. They don't need to grab the initiative. They've already gotten the man advantage. And Dream just trying to do all sorts of cheeky things while a star he's just holding patiently trying to restore that man disadvantage and ricks it's gonna go lobbing that molotov towards you know back a b site in the meantime venom has made his way out towards middle and what a shot this man is just feeling it gets another as well venom wow in the meantime, though, Dream will pop out and get the kill but that's gonna allow the rest of brutality to walk into the b bomb site and now it's all down to mjr Foxy, A-Star is going to go retrieving the bomb, but it looks like it's going to be a very difficult retake for MJR. He's going to have to hurry. Doesn't have a kit to his name. He's going to go peeking in towards the window. Area spots out A-Star, but A-Star is able to deftly dodge the bullets from MJR. And now A-Star, he's holding the tight angle right under window. And he's going to go peeking and he's going to find absolutely nothing. MJR has beaten the hasty retreat. His 2k all for naught and it is going to be 6-0 to Team Brutality. SRA, again, they caught, they seized the initiative, they had the man advantage, but Venom, those crucial two kills towards mid, that man turned this round on its head. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't just the fact 
that Venom got those two kills, he was able to pull that defender off of B to allow the rest of his team to come in. And MGR is going to get the frag onto A star, but it doesn't really matter. The round is one, and MGR, they're just going to try to take this op away from him, but they're not going to. MGR is going to find the remaining two players and holds the AWP as well. He's going to pass that on towards negative, and it is going to be a force by coming out from SRA. Desperate times, boys. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and it is going to be a very, very desperate buy. Major can pick up a FAMAS, and he, indeed he does. But scores 6-0 right now. Well, they need to try something. And that's the Xbox smoke. Rick's lining it up to perfection. That's going to land on Xbox. And looks like it could be a fast play. But Venom, he's not ready for this. He is not ready for the Guru. Dream does get taken down. But Foxy, he's going to take down the uh, Guru. Overextending slightly there, in my opinion. But the B-bomb side, again, is bereft of all counter-terrorists. But look at that. A flex doubling down. Holding down that W key, but A-star, he's got the angle. He's holding it down. He's going to rattle off a shot. Needs to fall back. Needs to go back to safety. And needs to get a better post-plant scene going. Oh, a flex. Dodging that nade somehow. That looked like it's gonna, he's going to catch it with his face. But Foxy. That has been smoked off. They need to ch channel their focus towards window because MGR is going to pop in, gets the kill. And now it's all down to Mr. A-star himself and he's going to get overrun. And that's the first round on the board for SRA. They do do it with... Uh, you know, at the cost of two players, uh, three players. So that means their economy going into the next round is going to be hella stretched. But at least it's something. It's the first round on the board. And maybe, just maybe, it's, you know, the turn of the tides that SRA were waiting for. And so far, what I've seen from Brutality, they're just, they're just playing the pick-and-play style of Dust2. Um, they're just waiting for the pick, and then they're overrunning either the A or the B bomb side. They're not really, there's not really much in terms of strategy going on here on their T side. It's just pure aim. And uh, SRA also playing a very default is Shut up. There we go. Dream opening things up. Finally, the man advantage uh, with SRA. But it remains to be seen whether they can actually seize the initiative. Brutality... While I'm a fan of the fragging that I'm seeing, the fact that they haven't really gone for any sort of map control worries me slightly. And A-star does get tagged down yet again. This two-man behold may prove to be a little bit too much. But then again, Juventa gets the kill onto the Guru. Dream has to play a very good hold till the time backup comes in. Let's lob a nade inside. A-star is going to dodge it. So no harm, no foul. We still have Ricks watching that mid-push, but look at the flank from MJR. He's already in T-frickin' spawn. But Juventa, well, he's got the idea, but that nade! Kobe! In the meantime, Negative has found Ricks towards mid. And Venom is going to desperately try and go for the trade or the refrag at this point. There's no trade so far into the, well, after the kill has happened. But Venom, very stressed. 40 seconds left on the clock. This is not looking good. Major? Well, it doesn't matter because mid is being watched like a hawk and negative does get the kill. Losing the plot slightly there, Team Brutality. And negative. Oh, A-star somehow manages to sneak past. And MGR, he's barreling up towards suicide. And doesn't matter, negative is the player that will get the kill. A-star goes down. Second round on the trot for SRA, and this time they do it by keeping four players alive, which means they're going to start building up that economy, that sweet, sweet economy. And Aflex still opting to stick with that Swag 7. It is a viable weapon. It's a very situational weapon, especially on Dust2, but it is still viable depending on where you play it. And Negative is itching to take that AWP long, but he is going to have to make his piece by mid, by playing mid, but that's a horrible smoke for mid. Uh, negative not really going to connect through the smoke and it looks like it's going to be a fast play towards a short and mid foxy already getting dinked down very very low and look at the rotation that's coming in it's such good awareness and yep that is one of those places where you would utilize the swag seven jump shot for days and a star picks up the guru the guru overextending slightly that's going to allow a star and the rest of the brutals a window of opportunity into this map one smoke to cross off the mid to be and they're good But I like where Dream is playing, actually. He's, he's reeling off that information that, boys, B, B tunnels is clear. So you can still focus towards A. And uh, 
well it looks like it is going to be an a hit with a slight bit of mid presence but then there's still a minute left on the clock it's still very early days the mid to b smoke does get put down and it is horrible it is absolutely atrocious clearly they haven't watched the cruxel videos and there's the jumping shot but he's getting burned down to a crisp a flex the second player to get burned to burn to a crisp on this side but negative he holds strong he gets the kills now it's all down to mr ricks and he's going to open the spray but unfortunately mjr is going to close it for him headshot on to ricks and sra three rounds on the trot brutality now are staring down the barrels of an eco Okay then. Negative. He's pushed up mid. This is a very good position. I don't think they'll be aware of it, but it is a pistol rush. He needs to make his way out of there, and he's gonna just be good for one frag. And Rick's getting a bit greedy for that AWP, but Guru is there for the support, and Guru gets another one. And Foxy, he's getting peppered through the door. That nade can be so devastating, but Foxy will avoid that. A flex in the meantime will get Juventa. MJR finds Foxy, and at the cost of that one player, negative. SRA put their fourth on the board. Very fast round coming out from both teams actually. These rounds although granted that previous round was just an eco so brutality would just want to get it over with as fast as possible. And it's not like SRA are playing some god tier CT setup. It's a 212. It's a basic 212 at that. And brutality they just seem to have seem to be lacking that tactical depth to crack it. They're playing a very pug style dust two so far. And while it started off well, I am liking the adjustment from SRA. They're giving up crucial positions, not going for these aggro peaks early on, because clearly brutality it does trump them on aim. And we're gonna see some fancy boost work coming out. Rick's getting boosted up. Listen, historically brutality is a very good dust two team, and so is SRA. There are no slouches on this map either. At one point, before dust two got taken out of the map pool, it was SRA's strongest map. A flex. Very aggressive hold. I'm liking this mid round switch up. They've switched up from. Well, oh my god, what a disgusting shot. Negative missing that shot. He needs to hurry on back. Otherwise, he's in for a world of hurt. And the man advantage again going the way of Team Brutality. Negative playing the Kenny S angle with the AWP. And there we go. Juventa gets the Guru Dream all alone on the bomb side. He's good for one. Unable to convert the spray down. And it looks like it is going to be another round for the boys in Brutality. It's a 4v2. It look, it's looking highly unlikely. And Rix has the angle. Can he hit the tripwire shot? Oh, tags him through the box. Major down to 13 points of health. And Major, he's just booking it. They want to save these guns. Negative picks up A-star in the meantime. He's just marking B-doors. And it looks like there's some miscommunication going on. I think the call was to go for the save, but negative. He's just feeling it right now. But there we go, Juventa with that kill. The op will not be allowed to be carried over to the next round. And Brutality will be putting the 7th round on the board. Major, 13 HP. He's saving in, well, the most common spot to save in this situation. That is Pit. The question is, will he be able to hold on to this gun? They really need to learn their smokes. <laughs> Both Brutality and SRA messing up easy smoke so that's a very easy smoke to hit for long doors and that mid to be smoke also that brutality failed a couple of rounds ago it's a fairly basic smoke guys come on anyway even though sra lose that round they have enough cash stored away to go for the double op setup none nonetheless and that's a little bit of miscommunication again i don't like the idea of using smokes to cross and that to two of them uh, on the ct side I'd rather they use the HE nade to cross, like, you know, Envious and G2 use it. They, they were the ones who actually pioneered that nade to cross uh, on Dust2. The French teams historically have been very good Dust2 teams. And Dream, holding a rather offish angle. I like the angle that he's holding. But Foxy, not really interested in peeking. And again, MJR, they're, they're switching it up. I like it. This time, though, they do manage to land the mid-to-be smoke. It's not the best mid-to-be smoke, but hey, at least it is a mid-to-be smoke. The 
there we go players slowly but surely inching their way up a shot a flex playing a very aggro angle it is more or less a one and done spot negative needs to come in support and negative does get one kill but immediately traded out venom is showing the top of his skull but foxy is there to get the kill foxy spots out another player as well guru he's made his way out towards a ramp he's gonna get one kill can he get another he's gonna spray down the second it's down to a 2v2 it is it's not really planted for ace uh, ricks that he's you know play the position he's playing but a star you don't want this man you don't want to trifle with this man and but he's gonna miss a lot of his shots and there we go he gets taken down ricks realizing that it's not planted for him gets spotted out and dream is able to clutch the final two rounds saves the awp as well both the ops getting carried forward yes sorry actually do a pretty good job on the retake granted a star kind of made a meal of his aim but hey you win some you lose some and sra they're not ones to be you know messed around with you give them the opportunity and they're gonna seize it with everything they've got that's exactly what they did very good buy coming out from sra um decent buy coming out from brutality a star still sticking with the op i think he's got the spawn for mid and he's not gonna take the shot and again we're back to the 2-1-2 guru needs to be careful that nade is a great nade foxy feeling that to his core but the push is gonna come in and well the guru is good for a spray down or two but negative sorry mjr with the awp is doing god's own work right now he's gonna molly that off he does have support in the form of negative who will get that final flick now it's all down to juventa He's got some utility. The bomb is dropped in front of him. He can grab that and make a beast beat a hasty retreat. But he's going to get stuck behind that smoke. But he can do some damage. And there we go. Gets that headshot. Going to pre-fire all the common angles. But Dream, a flex has made his way in. And he is going to take Juventa down. Got, getting caught on the reload. Little bit unfortunate there. And SRA, they've made their way on six rounds. And... For all intents and purposes, it's looking like they should be making their way onto seven because brutality are going to eco to have somewhat of a buy in the final round. gonna see some aggro b shot plays negative with the opening kill onto a star juventa he's gonna get his block knocked off him by a flex crisp little headshot but now mjr is in the thick of things does get the kill we do have ricks who stuck behind that smoke and he's gonna get taken down by a flex the final kill goes the way of the guru down goes foxy and things are all square they're tied up seven to seven sra showing there are no there are no slouches on Dust2 either. They were down 5-0 to o, and then 6-0 to o at some point. But then they came back and they came back pretty darn strong. Brutality just picking up one round in the last eight. And Dust2, the new Dust2 at least, it hasn't been played enough to declare it a T or a CT sided map. The old one though, the statistically was pretty darn balanced. And Dream needs to be careful. He's walking into the Hornet's Nest and he's going to get punished for his, well, foolhardiness to say the least. But, oh my god, MJR with the collaterals, the collats. And, well, MJR, he's going to reposition. What a god, what a god. But, well, needs to be careful. There is a player towards long. He's going to get taken down. Foxy, the last player in a 1v3. All SRA need to do is not give Foxy the 1v1s. He's trapped like a rat in a trap there's no way nowhere he can run to he has to commit to the b-bomb site and well sra need only to wait for the plant and then they can you know spring their trap and out fox mr foxy himself the thing that remains to be seen is will the hunters become the hunted will they overextend and go for the aggro peaks foxy he is not budging. He's going to smoke off door. He's going to go for the plant. He's going to fake it. That, that's a very good move. But 
Oh my god, what a dirty shot from a flex. Man. And look at the scoreboard. 14, 12, 13. Guru, MJR, negative. Nine on each. Uh, a flex and Dream. Dream is a stand-in. And, well, they're playing their part and they're playing it rather well. Pistol round, brutality. Even though they had a 6-0 lead, they're going into it with a one-round deficit. They really need to pick up this pistol round and then the subsequent rounds just so that they have a foothold into this in this map to build off of or to platform off of SRA. Well, they've turned the tables. They're on fire. And <laughs> look at that matchmaking strat. Five men going in towards tunnels. Looks like it's going to be a late B burst, but info placed by Juventa. It's going to hurt A star. He's going to get taken down. And Venom, he's getting dinked. He's getting peppered by bullets. Going to try and land a couple of cheeky headshots. Foxy, though, towards doors. Doesn't really have much of a choice. And Venom is going to go down. But Foxy does land a crisp little headshot onto Guru. Negative in the meantime gets two quick kills. And he's put the round squarely in the favor of SRA Ricks. And Juventa need to pull out some crazy magic tricks. To pull this round back, Rix would have spotted the shadow of negative. Juventa does get MJR, brings it down to a 3v2, but the round can be said that is fairly over. Juventa getting tagged on really low. Negative with the third kill. And Rix, the last player, going down to negative as well. Negative. Wow. What a positive KD and what a positive impact this guy has had on that pistol round. 4k for him. And SRA, well... They have struggled in the past with the anti-eco, but so far, his, again, so far historically, uh, they have been the team that has pulled up their socks the most. They have the best statistic of beating these anti-force buys in any team in the Masters League. And yes, that includes Invictus, Brutality themselves, and Entity, the three big boys in the league right now. And look at that aggro play from A-Star, and MGR is just going to put an end to his shenanigans. Foxy with the scout. He's trying to be cheeky, needs to be careful, needs to fall back. And well, Venom also trying to put that CZ to good use, but he spotted out Dream, and Guru has found Juventa. Venom has sight of the bomb. He, oh, what a shot. Does get one kill, but MGR immediate trade coming in, and a flex gets Rix as well. They're all very, very low. Foxy, if he had any idea how frighteningly low these players are, he would be going for this all guns blazing. But that meant to be smoke perfection right there. And Foxy is kind of out of options at this point. Cutting it very close there, SRA. 8, 8, and 24. That's a total of, well, 40 HP on SRA. That Foxy himself has more health than the entirety of the three players remaining on SRA. But Foxy has no idea of knowing this. And more importantly, it's still three bodies, right? And Foxy doesn't have armor. So... Well, he will be trying to save this scout at all costs. And the best part about this is that SRA will not be coming in for the hunt either. They want to save that Galil, that MAC-10, and that UMP and take it into the next round. No one is interested in going for the hunt. And a flex is still going to die. Unable to gauge the distance. Should have just left with MJR. And that ump shall be lost to, well, the trials of time. SRA looking rather comfortable. Uh, they should be moving on to 11 rounds here at the end of this round. Foxy, that scout on him and that CZ on Rix. The only two things to be concerned about realistically. And it's a mid stack. They're going to go pushing mid. Okay, they're going for the info play. They see that, you know, tunnels is completely clear. So they're going to swing towards the A bomb site. And negative, he's got a lot of work to do on his shoulders. Anyone who comes towards long will have to go. Well, down by negative. MJR finds Foxy, but no one's coming along. But he's hearing this. He's hearing the entire play up short. And he's going to catch Rix. He's going to ca shoot Rix on in the top of his skull. And Guru is going to find the remaining player. And that's going to leave Venom with a P250. And negative is going to find him as well. Just one casualty that previous round. That's going to be, well, MJR. He just had, a, I think he had a MAC-10. So again, no harm, no foul. Well, this is the crucial round for Brutality. 
Going for that force means that they're going to have very light utility, but at least they managed to put five rifles on the board. Foxy, he's completely blind and he's going to go down Juventa, the next player to face the music, and MJR is just going to annihilate him. The double smokes for the crossing, but I think the boost has come in. A star is on the bomb side. Doesn't matter. Guru is just going to destroy him. And negative, he's marking the smoke intently, playing from the car area. Rick's playing on the edge of that smoke. He's gonna get two kills, but Dream will finally take him down. He's down to a 1v2. Venom is just waiting for that Molotov to blow over. He doesn't have a kit. He's gonna get tagged down by that nade. But Venom can do it, but Dream is gonna put a stopper to Venom's breathing. And there we go. SRA winning that first buy round as well. Them looking very comfortable. Brutality now will be starting to sweat around the collars a little bit. They're on a desperate buy. I don't think they can actually pick this round up considering the way SRA are playing. But hey, we saw a complete 180 degree swing in the previous round. Uh, in the previous half, Brutality had a very strong start to their T side as well, winning six in a row. And then SRA did, you know, hunker down and pull that round back. And MGR should be conveying to his teammates that there is a push coming in. And A star, will he realize that there's a player still in spawn? Doesn't really matter. No one's marking the backstab and A star can literally just go to work. And there we go. A star's flank paying huge dividends. There's a lot of guns to be collected and they don't have bomb control either. SRA, they just completely shat the bed. I blame MJR. He should have told them that there is a mid push, guys. There could be a chance that someone's pushing. A star finally gets taken down, but Foxy, he has the weapons, but he's going to get taken down. Ricks. A flex doing some real work and a flex with a 4K. A flex. What? God tier. God tier from a flex. Absolutely brilliant. And 13 rounds on the board for SRA Brutality. Looking in all sorts of trouble at this moment. Whoa, nice shot on to A-Star, down to 30 HP already, but the hit is towards long and Rick's that tripwire shot. The man is back, you do not mess with the Rick's. Guy was the best opera in the world, in, in the country, sorry, not the world, for a reason at one point of time. And you're just witnessing his greatness right about now. The Guru getting <laughs> instantly castrated, shot in the testicles. Kiss your balls goodbye, son, because Surgeon Ricks is in the house. Foxy, he's going to mark MJR. MJR does land a leg shot onto Foxy. He's down to 18 points of health. But it looks like this is going to be the first round on the CT side. Riggs getting the fourth for the round. Man is on an ace. And MJR, he's going to find A-star. He's going to find Venom as well. But Riggs, well, the doctor is on the case. Will he get that kill? Oh! The timing just slightly off. And MJR, he's going to make his way towards the B bomb site with the bomb. Well, there is a slight gap in that smoke, and I do not think MGR will be able to cross before that smoke fades. But he does manage the crossing fairly com comfortably, and he should be able to get that bomb down as well. He's going to go for that aggro peak, and Foxy is going to snatch Rix's ace from right under his nose. But what a heroic round from the, one of the grand old men of Indian CSGO. And there we go. His team ceremoniously offers the defuse to him, saying like, man, you take that. You deserve the MVP because you are the MVP for this round. Four frags from him. That's what it took for Brutality to put their first round on the board on their CT side. SRA, well, they have enough money to go for a buy. Uh, negative can drop an AK-47 onto Guru. It's going to be five AKs. It's not a bad buy by any stretch of the imagination. But, well, this is going to be their last buy if they lose this. That means, well, the money's gone and SRA will have to eco. And the double ops coming out for brutality as well. Both Rix and A Star with the zoom bangers. A Star headed towards the B bomb site. Those flashes would have prompted his hasty rotation. Venom, the only player in there with a FAMAS that too. Not the best of weapons. Adi can attest to that. Adi hates the FAMAS. 
says it's worse than the ump. And while I may not necessarily agree, there is a case to be made there. The ump, with its higher kill reward and, well, a, a better weapon uh, for medium to close range, it's just that erratic spray. I don't like that spray on uh, the spray pattern on the f uh, on the ump. It's just way too strange, way too all over the place. Well, it looks like it is going to be a B hit. A stars there, but not there as well. And Venom is doing a very good job just dancing around that smoke. And A star still alive. A star is alive and kicking and fragging and killing left, right, and center. Juventus in the meantime has come in and Guru completely missing where A-Star was playing from and now in the blink of an eye it's him and Dream Scream. Can they get the frags? No, they cannot dream the lone soul survivor against a three-man brutality killing squad. Make that too. Juventus getting a fresh haircut courtesy Dream. Dream doesn't have much of an option here. He's running out of choices. He's running out of angles. And Foxy picking the perfect time to peek. Gets the kill. Will he be able to recover the AWP? No. Just falls short. Recovering that second AVP. So decent amount of economic damage done. But now SRA. Will they go for the force or will they go for the eco? I think they should be. There should be an economy equalization buy of sorts. A flex can drop a couple of pistols. But well, I think negative will be saving for that AWP in the next round. He's a very potent opper. And yeah, it's just going to be upgraded pistols major with the Deagle. And this should be the 10th round on the board for Team Brutality. I, I say should because it's pistols, it's CSGO, and it's more importantly, it's Indian CSGO. Anything can happen. Just expect the unexpected. Every match I've cast so far, there has been one of, there at least been one round where, you know, you can actually roll that Ripley's Believe It or Not track and it would fit in perfectly. And yep, it is a play slowly towards mid. That smoke. You went completely blinded. But Venom is going to get one. That's all he's good for though. But A star in the meantime sprays down three. And well, negative left all alone. in a 1v4 with nothing but armor and a tech nine. Looking highly unlikely. A star again. Heroic plays from the man. 3k. And Juventa should be careful. Clothesline with that tech nine from him. And Juventa. He's gonna not be a happy kitty. Negative. He's itching to go for that M4. But Foxy's there. Foxy is aware of negative's intention. And Foxy is gonna put an end to that. Brutality 10 rounds. SRA 13. SRA will be coming out with their buy. And Brutality really need to win this gun round to actually make a good strong case for their comeback i want to see what negative does he has the mid spawn should be going for that peak ricks also with the zoom banger we all know what he's capable of he was just witness to that a couple of rounds ago and negative he's gonna miss that shot not able to time it properly still gonna mark mid though and wow when all else fails yolo b venom gets the opening kill guru gets the instant trade a star he's gonna get one but that's all he's gonna get one for one trades across the board that is not gonna favor the t's the CTs because the B bomb site is very difficult to retake. And Juventa getting tagged down to 16 HP is not going to do them any favors either. Rick's just trying to jump spot with the AWP. Oh, just misjudging where those tracers were coming from. But a flex, he's going to get the headshot on a Foxy. And Juventa, he's so very low. Just marking. But Rick's, what a god. What a god this man is. Negative with the AWP. He's going to mark tunnels. Juventa needs to be careful. He's going to just waltz into that shot. And Rix, will he go for the save? Nope. He's going to go for broke. He's going to go for the retake. Just marking the edge of that smoke. Good nade. He's going to do some, some damage, but that Molotov is going to be even better. He's going to force MJR off the angle, but Rix not really timing that well. And nope. MJR is going to deny Rix. That's the 14th round on the board for SRA and Brutality. Their money is in a very precarious position. Rix is the only one with any sort of cash and they have to force into this round if they want to even have a chance of staying in this game. And there we go. It's going to be a very cobbled together by Juventa getting dropped off a mass. He's going to pick up the armor, the Kevlar and the helmet. This is a very important round for Brutality if they lose this it's GG because SRA will move on to 15 and, uh, well, Brutality won't really have a snowflakes chance in hell of 
well, playing against the SRA. They've looked on point against an anti-Ecos, anti-Bais. Dust 2 definitely proving to be their map. Juve Juventa getting spotted out. There is a player coming in support. That's Venom, but, well, Guru is trying to make his way out of there alive. He will not be able to, but look at that. A flex has made his way up short, but Venom, he's good for two frags. And Foxy, the only player in the B-bomb side, he's been spotted out. He's going to get double teamed very soon. In fact, there we go. That's the double team and negative. Holding the close angle towards mid. And the last player is Juventa. He's going to spot out negative. He's going to shoot him in the face. Should just save that AWP and take it into the next round. But there's no call for saving. There's no scope for saving. What am I saying? It's, a four it's, it's 14 to 10. If Brutality allow SRA to move to 15, that's going to be unthinkable. And Juventa making his way towards, well... Window and Dream spots it out and Dream will get that kill. That's the worst possible outcome for Brutality. They lose their force by they're completely broke. And, well, SRA may just be reading Brutality their last rights here. What a game from Brutality and SRA. SRA showing that they are a pretty damn good Dust 2 team. Let's see if Brutality can hold off against all odds. Ricks with the scout, taking it along. He's going to rattle off a shot. He's going to miss the shot. Lands the second, but Foxy, he's playing close. He's trying to be a nuisance. And there's the peak, but there's the double frag coming in. Ricks with the scout. Legs Dream pulls out the USP, does get the kill, but he's going to get taken down. And in the meantime, MJR finds a flex. And this is going horribly wrong. It's all down to Venom, the captain himself. But the bomb is yet to cross. That is important. But he just has a CZ. What can Venom do? And he's not going to spot the cross. He's going to allow the cross to happen. And SRA, they're in no mood to push. They're just going to play the bomb. They're going to plant it and play it like bosses. And they've planted it for short. They know short is clear. Well, they assume short is clear because that's what it's planted for. And Venom, he's going to come pushing. He's going to come inching his way. He does have a kit at his disposal. But Venom spots out MGR, does get the kill, brings it down to a 1v1, and oh my god, negative, surviving on 1 HP, 1 HP, a fart in his general direction, and he is going to walk away with the round, negative, can't really go for that peek, and Venom is sticking it, Venom is sticking it, and with 1 HP, negative, is going to clutch that game, a glorious 3k for him to see things off, SRA 16, brutality 10, well guys, that's all from my side. If you guys enjoyed this cast, please do hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and remember to hit that bell icon for daily ESL India Premiership goodness. This is Fett signing off. This is the first ever Omen X laptop for gamers that go to extremes. Gear up with a machine designed for total domination and engineered for gaming and stunning 4K. Equipped with the latest Intel Core processors, it gives you the power to be relentless. a 17.3 inch diagonal screen and desktop class graphics, you get maximum performance to be victorious anywhere. With multiple fans and large exhaust vents, heat is transferred away from critical components for dynamic overclocking. Ramp up boot times, game loading, and overall system responsiveness with optional RAID 0 SSD configurability. 
RGB LED backlit mechanical keyboard lets you program each individually lit key to create customized key maps that switch seamlessly between games. With two and a half millimeter travel and in-key rollover, you can take out your competition with more accuracy and precision. Designed for extreme immersion, DTS Headphone X technology comes built in for surround sound experience that puts you right in the middle of the action. With the addition of a VR headset, gamers can step inside a completely immersive world for an elevated gaming experience. Single panel access to key components makes serviceability and upgrading easy so you won't be sidelined or held back on your road to supremacy. It has a brushed aluminum finish on an armor-like chassis. A jet fighter-like construction with hidden lift hinges ensures you're always at the ready. And with striking lighting effects and see-through window to components, others will know too. Unleash your fiercest gameplay anywhere with the extreme performance of the new Omen X laptop. and stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. All right, people, welcome back to the ESL India Premiership 2018 Summer Season Masters League brought to you by Omen by HP, HyperX, and Intel. And, uh, of course, uh, Nordwin Gaming and ESL bringing it to you, India's largest open league uh, esports tournament. Uh, well, essentially, when I say Nordwin Gaming, since it's an off on Tuesday, I'll repeat, it's just me. It's just me. But moving on, uh, Dota 2, ladies and gentlemen, is the final game for today. We have two amazing teams. One is an international team. If you consider just crossing the boundary of a state and going into another country, international, sure, we'll, we will consider that. Let's start off with the first team, here, Alpha Esports. <laughs> All right, now that we know that one of the teams is Alpha, the opposition is the one who is international. I'm talking about a Bangladeshi team, the council. Okay then, uh, so now both the teams are ready, game is ready. What are we waiting for? The game itself. Let's go there. Ladies and gentlemen, Bhaiyo or Devio or Sanjano, welcome back to ESL India Premiership Winter Season. My name is Floki. Joining me is Vivek. And Vivek, what do you think of my warm Indian Hindi welcome to all our, or to all the people tuning in? Dire team band. Do you think my Hindi sucks? No, yeah, Hindi is actually good. Uh, You're smiling. Come on, you can give me the answer. 
No, it's 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 good. It's good. I mean, there've been a lot of people in chat asking for us to cast in Hindi. Unfortunately, Dota is such an abstract game that uh, I don't know. I don't think anyone would be able to cast it in Hindi that fluently, especially yeah. not team fights, because I think there are certain words that Ten just don't translate that well. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, council. Uh, they're just gonna go with the standard, yeah. yeah. Len is back, so they've got Len uh, in the lineup. They're gonna pick up the Skyrath Mage. Uh, you spoke uh, of Alpha Esports picking up the Nyx. Why Nyx? Uh, I think the answer is fairly simple. Like he's really good against Skyrath Mage because he can burn all of his mana away. You burn his mana uh, in, I mean, in a team remain. fight. He takes a lot of damage. You also have the uh, Carapace, which Five can get popped on the Mystic Flare. So he can actually just run into the Mystic Flare, get a guaranteed stun off, then follow through with an Impale. And this is a game where if Skyrat Mage gets caught, he's going to die 100% of the time because the Council are relying on the Axe to initiate and get that initial call going. <coughs> Once they have that initial call going, it's probably going to be a Mystic Flare on top of that. That's where the Nyx Assassin comes in, pops the Carapace. That's an ideal scenario, but that's likely how we're going to see the... Skyrat going down. Either that or the Shadow Shaman finds a blink. Do you know what? I think this might not be a mid Skyrat. I think Skyrat and Axe will probably do a lane. I mean, I don't know. I, I, and I'll tell you why I think that way because I've seen a couple of international teams just run Axe and Skyrat in a dual lane. Yeah. Pal Hunger and the constant Arcane Bolt can be a real problem. Radiant and team. no magic stick keeps you alive against that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be the standard offlane axe in the mid Skyrath. Standard mid Skyrath because that's pretty much the standard for council. Uh, but yeah, it, they have the possibility of switching things up. Anything that you think is a strong laner versus the Skyrath major early on? Pagna with another what? Yeah, uh, other than the Pagna. Ten seconds uh, a sniper is not too bad actually. Once he has, I mean, he can just max Five out his uh, third skill and just attack from a big distance. And if the Skyrath decides to contest him and throw out Arcane Bolt, he's going to have to walk closer. And because you have the more range as Sniper, you're going to get that trap in the lock, get those right clicks in between. And with the headshot and the assassinate and like a simple TP rotation from the Nyx, you can actually kill the Skyrath Mage. Right. I mean, time and time again, whenever we've seen Council run the Skyrath Mage, and I've, I've been watching this for three years, uh, it's, it's just that he wins his lane. Yeah. So I think if you can shut him down in the lane, he's, he's going to feel rather inefficient through the rest of the game. Council, they rely on snowballing hard from the lanes. It's mm -hmm. Len winning his lane. It's their dual offlane working, which we'll definitely Dyer see uh, uh, with the Axe or with the Sand King in some form or capacity. And if you shut them down in the lanes, it's, it's easy uh, to take a game of them. Not easy, but possible. Yeah. They're also playing without Jin. Len is there, but Jin isn't. Uh, so it's yeah. Susmoy, their previous mid laner. Um, I'm not sure who's going to be heading mid. Will it be Susmoy or Len? This Ember Spirit pickup tells me It is me a Len that, hero. Yeah, it is a Len hero. So, so we might see mid Ember. No, I think I'll, I'll tell you what. Their, their laning is remaining. wacky, but I'm, I'm going to call out their lanes exactly how they're going to run them. It's not going to be a mid Ember. It's going to be a same lane Ember, I think. Back. Oh, uh, do you think uh, it's because... Why Why do you think it's a safe lane, Ember? L let me see the last pick, then I'll call out the lanes. Yeah, I think the Ember Spirit is probably going to go mid. Uh, I mean, they've banned out most of the hero counters, and they could ban out Puck as well if they want right now. So Ember Spirit has a decent matchup. I'm not a fan of Ember versus Nyx, though. Ember, yeah, it's I mean, Flame Guard is... Yeah. It's a, it's a free Carapace and a free stun for the Nyx Assassin. Exactly. Five then you can have a uh, follow-up with the Shadow Shaman with the Lifestealer. So Nyx is one of the worst stuns in the game, in my opinion. Oh. It's, it's, it's short in Radiant range. It's uh, the hardest to hit of an Earth Spike, a Baru Spike, and an Impale. And Impale from the Nyx is the hardest to hit. And it's, it, its damage isn't as effective. He has no talent. I mean, he has a damage Radiant amplification talent. Pick. But the Impale is so short just by itself. But it is a long stun, and if you get in on multiple heroes, that can actually win your team fight. Yep. I think it's a two point eight second stun, right. and finding the and finding two stuns on a hero, let alone a one two point eight second stun, is absurd. In all honesty, that's nearly five seconds of chain stun. If I'm not wrong, spike carapace at max level stuns for two point two seconds, so Ten you actually seconds have five seconds of continuous disable on top of some mana burn and an invis. So I think that's a pretty good deal for support. Just imagine Earthshaker. I mean, even that guy, that's after the Blink Dagger, he can chain stun someone for 4.5 seconds. Nyx does it without one. I don't like this last pick, though. 
Yeah, this Necroforce, I'm not too sure why they would pick it into an axe as well as a Skyrath. Also a Sand King. So much magical damage, I don't yeah. think they wanted to pick this Necroforce. They were go, probably going to go... go, go Shroud just seconds, amplifies remaining. all that. Yeah. I mean, his his second spell. Goshra. Indeed. It's going to amplify remaining. all incoming magic damage. So much incoming magical damage. Uh, there's no one that's going to be burst down really quickly so that your Reaper's Sight does work. Uh, I mean, Maybe if he builds a Hood or a Pipe, he's going to feel better. But he's not a phenomenally strong laner. Uh, I think Alpha Esports feel that with his passive, uh, with that AoE uh, negative health region, he might be able to do well in a lane. I'm not sure. This could be hit or miss, mm -hmm. but I'd much rather see a something conventional like the Puck. You, the Waning Rift is nice. Uh, in general, the Coil is also good. Or maybe something like the Pugna, which I think is good versus the Skyrath Mage. I mean, all, all these heroes are going to hurt versus... Uh, a Pagna pickup. Yep, even the Ember. Yeah, and looks like they're going to go for the Wiper pick. So you might actually be right about this. The yeah. Ember could be heading safe lane. Yeah. Uh, wait, no. <laughs> no, just... no, it is a safe lane Ember. Uh, oh, Viper is going mid? That's I, think be... so. oh, I think so. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is wait, hard to So say. they were thinking safe lane Ember themselves, but now they're going to switch things up. Um, okay, so it I is a support Skyrath. Yeah. It is a support Skyrath. Uh, Lens here, so so small. The other mid laner, he's been relegated to the five position. Uh, <laughs> yep. Deaths will go to the safe lane actually. Yeah, and I think Len will go mid. The safe lane wiper really good against the tide exactly. hunter. Exactly. Nether toxin, five second cooldown, break. Don't worry about the kraken shell. You also get the silence at max level. Yep. So actually, this wiper pick is really good because. They're going to have a hard time bursting him down considering that they're mostly magical damage in this early game. Up until at least Lifestealer has something like an armlet and a Desolator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think... Uh, yeah, but I think uh, Council, they got the heroes they wanted. I'm battle. a bit puzzled about this Necroforce pickup. Uh, might not be too bad versus the Viper. I think uh, Reaper Scythe is good in general. Uh, but uh, he might struggle at the mid lane. Yep. He has gone for the standard uh, build with two branches, one Null Talus, one Pool Tangos. I think he should be holding his own once he has that Death Pulse up and going for himself. Uh, while he does not provide kill potential onto the Ember, the Ember is going to have a bit of a hard time killing him as well. Because you're going to have Death Pulse, you're going to have Magic Wand. Sure, the Ghost Shroud amplifies magical damage, but I think with the Death Pulse and the Magic One, you can offset that quite well because you get two times the heal with the Ghost, Ghost Shroud. Shroud. Yep. No, you get 1.75 times the heal, never mind. You can see here, it's a 75% restoration amplification. To Shout out to Gayoon, okay. I'm afraid uh, you might be a bit too late on that though. Pinoy you know, Hunter. I take some battle hunger to the face. Now, Council do want to run down this Nix Assassin. He does throw the stun, but it only connects on this guy at the Susmoy. He's just going to keep chasing this uh, Nix Assassin and he's going to end up falling. Lost Rider might be the casualty though for the side of Council, and indeed he will end up dropping here. Susmoy is taking a lot of damage from the Shadow Shaman who does a fair amount early on with his base damage. And Ask Bankai making a smarter move, but Susmoy, well, He's going to get shackled up and the battle hunger is not going to be enough to find him the rune. Ask Bankai. Has to struggle a little for the rune, but he will find it nonetheless. Yep. Who got the top bounty runes? Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, looks like the top bounty runes were picked up by Animal and Death. Okay. So win for Council. Uh, early on, they get first blood. They get three bounty runes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oh no, Tilt Man. This is... Denied. Went for the Heartstopper aura first. Okay, I mean, that's not bad, certainly. Yeah, I think that's what you put at level 1 in this lane. Probably, yeah. I mean, you can harass the Ember Spirit if you stay exactly. in range. But just look at this. I mean, he's having a hard time because he's tanking a bunch of creeps while doing so. So Ember, he can just, like, go in for the last hit. He doesn't have to stand in the hot stop all, all the time. Bottom lane, the Susmoy dropping. No, he's going to end up falling. Shadow Shaman and Lifesteeder bring him down. Lost Rider might be the next one. There is a stun coming off cooldown for Pinoy Hunter, but it's in 3 seconds, and he's going to back off. 
Yeah, Animal might look to turn things around because Ask Monkey is still level 1 with the open wounds. Indeed, he is going to power strike forward. The battle hunger as well, giving Axe that bonus movement speed along with the booster chase, but a nice two man stun. Ask Monkey. Pinoy Hunter, Ask Monkey dropping solo. Are the mangoes and tango going to keep him alive? No. The last right click from Lost Rider, they actually find the kill. Take that. Yeah. The life sealer just hanging around a bit too long to find out what happens and ends up falling. Unnecessary death on him. Uh, that shouldn't have really happened. Uh, but yeah, I think Pina Hunter, I, he made the right call. He didn't have the impale, he backed out, but they're looking to go again. Yep. There's a stun onto the Lost Rider, and Lost Rider is out of mana, but he does have a mana. He's gonna pop it back up, but Animal is gonna come in from the back lines. He's gonna go onto the Shadow Shaman. The Shadow Shaman is gonna end up dropping, but it's gonna come at the cost of Susmoy and his life. Animal, he might be the next to pay the price, but fortunately for him, Pino Hunter has no mana for the stun. Even if he did pop the mango, he wouldn't have the range, so he's gonna make it out to safety. And time and time again, there's a lot of aggression here in the bottom lane. This aggression is only going to favor the axe because if Ask Bankai is going to miss out on is going to miss out on creeps in the middle of these uh, in the middle of these little skirmishes, ganks and skirmishes, yeah. he's he's going to get his arm a little late. And getting that armlet late means that he's not going to have the damage to bring down uh, well to bring down anyone on the side of team uh, the team council. Tiltman, he's taking a fair bit of harass in the mid lane, but he can turn things around because of the two points in Death Pulse. One of the few mid laners that actually doesn't really need a bottle. You just last it well and you actually end up uh, surviving and doing just fine. He has another Death Pulse, you can get multiple last hits with this one. Got only one. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that's not good for Tiltman. That's very bad for Tiltman. So they gave the Tide uh, the off lane versus mm -hmm. the Viper. And uh, Ty's actually not doing that bad, which I'm really puzzled about. I think he got multiple uh, sets of regen here. Bottom lane though, Alpha. Well, they're gonna lose the Shadow Shaman now and they may lose even more. But Ask Bankai, he's keeping fairly healthy courtesy of those open moons. He's now gonna get stunned up though, so things are gonna turn around on this life sealer. He does not have rage because he did go for the second point into Feast. He does have the wand though, so that is gonna keep him alive for a while longer. Is Animal gonna drop to the range creep? No, he survives with a third lot of HP. Those bonus mangoes coming into play and helping him out there. An instant hex by Shadow Shaman as well to prevent the aggression, but Lost Rider. That's not the aggression you can stop. Arcane Bolt, no way you can destroy it, it ends up going down. They're really applying a lot of pressure on this Lifestealer, and you can see Lifestealer is not feeling too happy about it. Three minutes in, only with boots and mangoes, no cutting day to farm well, but things may start to turn around for him. The Impale stacked with the Shackles, this is not what you want to do if you're Alpha by any means, but you'll still find the kill on the Skyrat Mage. Next time around though, you know, make sure you don't stun those, you don't want to couple those together. Tiltman in the mid lane, well he's dropping dangerously low, he might actually just end up falling here, he has no last hits. As a result, no reason and Len finds the kill. Middle He's even going to find an attack. illusion rune. That is extra bottle charges for him. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting switch up to the bill. Comes yeah. Out from Len. Let's go find a kill. Uh, but yeah, putting points in. Wow. Yeah, this is action all over the map. Shadow Shaman is going to end up dropping. Ask Bankai. He has no points into rage. I mean, he has one point into rage, but he's already used it. So I'm going to be able to turn around and find a kill. And Len, he's having a really good time in this mid lane, despite uh, being in a bit of an awkward matchup against the Necroforce. He's found decent amount of last hits uh, for four and a half minutes, sitting on 20 to three, while Necroforce sitting on 18 to six. He does have more denies on Necroforce, but that kill really offset the advantage he gained. The bottom lane, more action brewing out the axe, just doing so much in this early game is going to finally end up falling. So that's a killing spree going the way of Ask Bankai. He's going to be happy about that. That's going to make sure he has his face boots and a Quelling Blade. But the Bounty Runes, that's something that he can't have because Lost Rider picked them up. Blizzard, he's going to the top lane and he's actually going to find those two Bounty Runes. So, Lifestealer, he's at least going to find those two for himself. Really needs that bonus goal and you need to secure every Bounty Rune you can if you're Alpha without dying. Blizzard doing just that. Pinoy Hunter, he might actually be in some trouble as a Nyx Assassin. He's put one point into everything, so he's a bit of a versatile Nyx. He can pop his carapace and stun, stun multiple heroes. Hex comes in as well from the Shadow Shaman, and now the Impales follow through. No matter for the Shackles though, so he's just gonna get trapped in his trace. In fact, Ask Bankai taking a bunch of damage, but he's trying to turn it around with the open wounds. But the Battle Strike from Manuel is gonna secure the kill on Lifestealer. And now, things being turned around. Shadow Shaman, trapped in the trees for so long, is gonna end up dropping the Impale. I mean, it clips onto Anil, but it doesn't bring him down. 
While all this is happening, top lane, Blizzard is going to end up dropping once again. Death, more than just pulling his weight, he's actually completely decimated this side hunter. Yeah, he's maxed out uh, the poison attack. Feels no need to put points into the corrosive skin early on. And he's got one point in the nether box. At mid, I wanted to talk a bit about Lens Kill Bill. He's put maximum points into his second spell of Slide of Fist. This is simply so that he can dodge the death pulse as and when he needs to. Mm -hmm. uh, which is an interesting switch. Uh, doesn't feel the need for the root early on. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's trying to minimize the damage he takes from the death pulse. Uh, Necro. Starting to struggle in this lane. Has died once. Can we take a look at net worth? I'm sure the lifestealer is way, way... Uh, <laughs> far behind is what I was going to say, but all this uh, hits at the bottom lane actually helped him out. Yes. Yeah, he has the race. He's going to pop it now. He's going to start working onto Animal. Animal still has about a strike, so should be fine for the side. Cashes him perfectly, chops him into two. He's going to end up falling and Ask Bankai still chasing for more, but he does not have a stun, unfortunately. Coastal not skilled up by Tiltman, so no slow is going to be coming in for you. You probably have to back off and make sure you don't lose Tiltman, actually. Should be fine, but that... The damage from the Skylight Mage at this point, somewhat really hitting hard onto Tilt, man. Raindrops wouldn't be too bad of an investment here, yeah. if you ask me. But he's at least going to find himself the Shrine. You wish you had the Ghost Shot at this point so you can get the maximum uh, efficiency out of the Shrine, but you don't considering you're up against an Ember. And bottom lane, there's so much action time and time again. So this boy is going to end up dropping on his axe. He has Tranquil Boots and he's saving up for his Bling Dagger. It might be worth to buy out a Ring of Regen. So he can actually at least just complete his vanguard, but looks like vanguard is not the item of choice. He's just gonna call and accept his death. Uh, died. Oh, uh, died? He actually made it out alive barely okay. in the nick of time. So he's he's just recognized that all he has to do is TP out. Yep. A Viper, no suns available on him. As soon as the Viper strike is upon him, he TPs out. Len, I think the idea behind the slight of fist build is to harass the enemy mid laner. Yeah. And it's been working out quite well for him. You can see that that Slight is doing so much damage. And the triple remnants too jump forward by Len, but Len is running out of mana. He has no mana for he has only mana for one slide of fist, and that's not gonna be enough. Tiltman is still chasing forward. He has the phase boots. He can get animal, and Blizzard is gonna secure the kill with a crush while bottom lane, Pino Hunter finds the kill onto Sysboy, and Lost Rider picks up the kill on Ask Bunker. So Skyrat Mage having a really wonderful start for a position 5 support here. Things going in the way of council. They have the slight net worth advantage. They have the map control as well. And Len, I mean, he's just been undisturbed. Hasn't died a single time in this mid lane. He's also gonna just drop the remnant out, go back to base. Weird choice of boots. Never seen this one on the Ember. Yeah. I it think it's because once again he's gone slide of fish and he wants to output as much physical damage. Maybe he's. Ooh, that slide of fish actually just dealt so much damage here. It's on a short cooldown too. It's every six seconds. And Tiltman has to be careful to not take too much damage because he can go down. I mean, he's a Necroforce, but he's not that tanky. Top lane, Blizzard is gonna end up falling. Death's now dominating, picking up kills for himself, left, right, and center. Wiper having the start of his life, 1.5k goal in the bank on top of face boots, Aquila, raindrops, and a wand. The perfect start for the lane dominating hero. Yeah, bottom lane. Done. Bottom is done. Yep, Pinoy Hunter does not have Carapace, does not have mana for any of his spells. He's gonna get Battle Strike, so wand can't be popped either. Ask Bankai, he's not level 6, so no invest for you, really. But at least you're gonna end up surviving because Council have given up on the chase Radiance while Tiltman is gonna end up falling attack. mid. Len. I think he got the kill using the remnants and the flame guard there. Was the ulti popped? Yes, the ulti was popped by Necroforce, but the flame guard actually held him survive there. Len still finds the kill bottom lane. More action going out. And once again, Susmoy, every time they make an attempt onto his life, he gets turned around with the help of Lost Rider and those butter strikes from Animal. And looks like this is what's gonna happen again. Lifestealer, sis. Sitting his time, biting it out in the trees. Animal's going forward. He really wants the Battle Strike off, but he does not find it because Ask Bankai finds the Clutch Rage. Now Tiltman is here. He could pick up the kill onto Animal, but Animal TPs out in time perfectly and he's gonna be okay. Mid lane. Rune is gonna get scouted out by Animal. He's gonna leave it for his buddy Len. And I have to say, Susmoy, he, he's done fine for himself in this uh, bottom lane here. He's picked up the wit booster. I'm not sure how I feel about this considering he's against the life stealer. Probably a ring of region would have been a lot better here considering that you actually just heal up all the time life stealer attacks you and that gives you more survivability than a wit booster. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, in this you're matchup, against is because Fish does more damage for higher HP. Damage. Yeah, 4.5% uh, max HP as damage. Never want to be the one 
with the highest health in a game against Life Stealer. That's why Centaurs never picked. Mid lane. Len could be in some trouble, but it's just able to remnant out perfectly. Ravage not committed by Blizzard. Did not feel confident. Ooh, that slight of fist. Boy, you wish you had the chains, but Len is just gonna go forward. He could have found the kill, but he's afraid of Oh my god! Did he just see the Shadow Shaman losing half his HP? Yeah, 300 mm. HP gone. Oh boy, Len is really feeling it today. Man, those phase boots and Akira, we did question it earlier, but it's, it's, it's also the double damage rune. Oh, yeah, it's, it's mostly the double damage rune, but you have to agree that this this phase boots is also doing a lot of work for him. Absolutely. And look at that, Pino Hunter loses like half of his HP as well. Hmm. I Definitely a build I want to try in my pubs. <laughs> I, I know where Len is coming from. Guys, I play Skyrath Mage, I spam Arcane Bolt, I'm playing Ember, I'll spam Slight of Fish. Mm. And I'll make that work. <laughs> I see. I, I mean, no, but jokes aside, it's working for him. I think he wanted that Radiance cooldown, he wanted uh, to be able to output damage, uh, which is why he's clearly picked up the face boost. But I also guess he wants to be able to dodge uh, a bunch of spells, actually, if he yeah. times it perfectly. So, Smoy, well. He's uh, doing well with his Tranquil Boots, in fact. He's putting it in and out of his backpack, so he has that region going for himself. Lost Rider is going to scout this haste rune out, though. Len is going in from the backline. Blizzard, he does have a Ravage. He could have popped it, but didn't feel comfortable. And looks like he didn't have confident, confidence in his ability to kill Tiltman. I mean, to kill Len, in all honesty. I'm Ravage. Really sure why Blizzard came mid and hung around for five Radiant's minutes or three minutes. Yeah, it's the good old Mexican standoff. You know, you just show them who's boss. Low. Yeah, Skylight's dropping low, but so was Ask Bankai. So Smoy, he's out of mana, he does have the call, but the infest from the life they're keeping him alive for a while longer in this dire creep. And Tiltman is gonna end up dropping as a result. Ask Bankai with the ward, actually does. He just calling late. Will he find a kill? Nope. Lel is gonna find a kill, in fact. He's gonna find three of those. Triple kill for him. And he's gonna have these wards to farm up. Oh boy. Deaths, he also wanted in on the action, but looks like he was a little bit too... Wait. He was in time, actually. He got the Wiper Strike off, if I'm yep. correct. <coughs> so, good for attack. Council. I mean, they're just going all over the map, dominating every single where they go, on the back of this Ember Spirit and the Wiper. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what Council love doing. They pick these heroes that come online early on, and uh, just try to go around the map, killing heroes as much as they can as a unit. That's mm -hmm. what they really seem to be good at. Top lane. But Pinoy Hunter does have the Vendera now. Who do you think he prioritizes Killing to go on this three. game? Anyone. Only. If he can even go up on anyone. Uh, ideally, this Kyrath Mage. I see. So, Smoy. And uh, that's, they're just attack. laying in the hurt for the side of Alpha Esports. They're losing every single hero that comes to this bottom lane so far. Mm -hmm. I think lost the lifesteal and the tide hunter. Yes. All in the mid lane, this could be the turnaround they need. Ember Spirit, though, quick with the slide of fist and the remnant out. Well played by Len. And now the counter initiation from Lost Riders. There's a triple remnant going forward. Not really finding a kill though so far, but he will pick up the next assassin with the help of the slide of fist. He has a blade mill pop and he's gonna end up finding the Shadow Shaman as well. Perfectly predicted there by Len. That was not a ward starting him out. That was pure skill. The Ravage though, being popped by Blizzard. Tillman is gonna find a massive streak onto Len's head. With the help of the site, and now Lost Rider, he could be in some trouble as well. A gush is coming off cooldown, but he's trying to chuke into the trees. Is he going to end up surviving for this one? He just might. Tidehunter not able to find the gush, and he's probably going to have to just back off. And indeed he will. Uh, they pop Ravage, they lose Shaman, they get Ember, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they managed to find the kill onto Len with the, on the hands of Tiltman. So Tiltman is going to find a lot of gold for himself. In the bottom lane, that's he's just chilling on his wiper, just doing his thing, being the dead lane hero, pushing pushing it out. So Smoy, he's getting closer to his blink, has 1.2k gold in the bank, also has these bounty runes to pick up. But the bounty rune top lane did get picked up by Animal. He's also farming the stack here, which is going to make sure he gets his blink a little bit faster. He's sitting on 1.4k gold himself, so these blinks are probably going to come in tandem and in conjunction with each other. That's when you're going to have a really strong team fight presence if you're the council. Probably want to look to get some nice uh, team fight synergy going on for yourself with the call into the epicenter and bottle strike. Although speaking of team fight synergy, look at this one: magic damage ember with the ancient seal. Lost Rider picks up that kill with the help of the Mystic Flare. Len, he's more than happy to kill this Necro first time and again assist in killing him. There's even a region rune waiting for him. How perfect! Top lane, there is an attempt. It's on to Animal though, and Animal's gonna get shackled up. Pinoy Hunter does not have a stun available for himself, but he has the dust. 
an animal. No battle strike. Wait, he doesn't have a battle strike in two seconds. He might actually make it out of this. Yes, he will. Pinoy Hunter coming in from the back lines. He has an infield. He's gonna pop the Vendetta. But wait, he popped this one. He's gonna miss the impale as well. Animal will survive on a silver of HP. While Lost Rider and Susmoy, they're trying to turn things around, but they're just getting turned upon. Shadow Shaman drops his ward, drops the shackle, but Susmoy with the Vanguard, he's actually pretty damn tanky. Lost Rider as well. With his high movement speed, it's gonna be okay. And now the council just have to run while Blizzard, he ended up losing his life somewhere. But look at this. Council, they're coming with all the heroes and now they're gonna find the kill onto the Shadow Shaman. Ask Bankai as well, out of luck, out of life. Should end up falling to the Ember Spirit as well as the animal on his uh, Stand King here with the help of the Battle Strike. Mystic Flare drop, Len picks up a double. All lives must end. Welcome back, Vivek. Oh yeah. How's the coffee taste? Good. Good. Um, Lens going for a BKB. Huh. Yep. I think the BKB is mostly because he's against the Necroforce. He can prevent all that side damage and he can prevent the Ravage, the Nyx stun, the Shadow Shaman stun. I think it's a good item to uh, have this game. Uh, so the side, Reaper Scythe can go through Spell Immunity but the but damage, the damage does not. As a result, it's, it, it's sort of a good item to get. I mean, sure you can get stunned up but on, then you only have to worry about the lifesteal right clicking you down, which could be an issue, in all honesty. But uh, at the moment, does not seem to be one because lifesteal only has an arm. And you can see Ravage is being popped by a blizzard. It's gonna get broken up and dead. Might end up going down with the help of the site. The kill will go for the way of the Shadow Shaman, in fact. And the Shadow Shaman setting up for but so small. Two man call, two man call straight off the bat with the triple remnant forward as well from Len. The Mystic Flare dropped the Ancient Seal upon us, Banka. He's gonna end up dropping Animal with his own Blink Dagger coming in, stunning up Blizzard. Pinoy Hunter trying to make the best of the situation. Trying to make sure his team can get out alive and maybe get a few revenge kills here and there. And indeed they will. They'll manage to find one in the form of the Sand King, but they might lose Blizzard who barely ends up surviving on 100 HP. Pinoy Hunter as well and Tiltman are all gonna end up surviving. Thanks to the rotation there by Pinoy Hunter. Good rotation by him, good carapace, good stun. But Susboy, he's not done yet. He wants to make the most of this. Gozen ends up falling to the half top order from Necrophos. As well as the Death Pulse, and now Necrophos turning things around. This is exactly the kind of fights you want if you're the Necrophos. But Necrophos, he's eventually gonna end up going down. The Flame Guard is back up for Len. He's just moving forward like a fearless man. And with the Flame Guard down, he's gonna retreat like a coward. He's manly, but not that manly. Might die, middle tower is under oh, the Aether Shock. Barely enough to get him. No wand charges either, so that was Len floating with death. He has no wand, actually. He's playing without the wand. Yeah, he's playing without the wand. He's actually gonna buy the Maelstrom for himself before the BKB, so he prioritizes the damage over the uh, survivability. I mean, he has been fairly survivable, to be honest, in these fights. He hasn't really died many a times. He's only died once, the Reaper's Sight. And outside of that, he's been doing a fantastic job. 11, 1, and 3. Highest on net worth charts. 107 last hits. This is a happy Ember. Yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Animal. He's just farming all these camps. Pushing out these uh, lanes. I think he's trying to set up for a kill onto anyone who comes bottom. And Tiltman might be the one he sets up on. But so smart, he's just farming ancient. I think this is a bit of a mistake when sometimes people play Axe. I think as an Axe, your job is just to run around the map constantly and set up team fights if you tend to farm you might get a bit complacent and you actually end up missing out your timing window where you're really strong as the axe which is this uh mark up to the 25 minutes think where you can solo kill most heroes on the he's map probably gonna look to continuously set up fights once he has that blade mail I see. that's what he feels like he's missing you want blink plus blade mail i'm sure blink first and find something but you don't want to slow down you want to get that blade mail uh, Tiltman, mm -hmm. what is Tiltman picked up? He's got a Veil and a Hood. Yep, Dad, he's got a Veil, he's got himself a Hood of Defiance. Smoke is gonna get popped onto Blizzard. Is he gonna pop the Ravage? He does have it now. He sees Lost Rider, but he does not feel comfortable popping it. It's only a bunch of offerings and supports. You don't wanna pop your Ravage, you wanna save it and get what you can, but never mind. I was wrong, Ravage gets popped. So it's my fairly tanky, surviving through it all. But now with the help of the Shadow Sham and Shackles and Ask Bankai coming in, they might find a kill. But Epicenter comes in from Animal. He managed to get it on multiple heroes, but he doesn't really find a kill. He's gonna end up going down as well. Tiltman finds himself a double. And at the end of the day, what should have been two kills ends up being three for Alpha. Yeah. 
No, I think the mistake was, uh, I mean, it wasn't a mistake per se, but what Council could have done differently with that epicenter is borrow strike the Shaman, who had the shackles off, which was offering control versus the Axe. Without the shackles, Axe might have gotten the call off, some RNG might have kicked in, and they might have possibly found a trade in that situation. Uh, even then, uh, three years die from the Council. The tide is dying as we speak. Len, oh, my bad. Just top decimating top heroes top all across top. the map and getting away, not being punished. I mean, this is the specialty of the Ember Spirit. Gets in and out of team fights so well, it's really hard to punish that hero unless you have something like a silencer or someone to silence this guy. He's like a Storm Spirit, much in the sense that if he gets his spells off, he's gonna win the team fight. If he doesn't, he's gonna lose. Very spell reliant hero, not the best stat gain either. So he's mostly gonna be relying on uh, his Light of Fist and his. Uh, Fire Remnant to jump in and out of these fights. If you manage to catch him when he uses all of his remnants, maybe set up a bait play, that's when you can find a kill onto Len. However, that is looking a bit risky because he's level 18 and those remnants deal 900 damage to Magical. Oh, Impaled does connect onto the Sand King, ask Wankai, he might just end up finding the kill onto Animal here. Animal does borrow strike to delay his fate a little bit further. Hell, he might actually survive with the TP coming in from Death, and he might try to turn things around. Now, his blink is coming off cooldown in 3 seconds. They don't have a ward scouring this out, but if he goes a bit far forward, he might be able to see Ask Bankai. He's trying to find the blink, the Tranquil Boots kicks in, he also has the Wind Lays, but he does not have a lot of HP. Meanwhile, looks like there's a fight breaking out near the shrine. The Shadow Shaman is gonna end up falling here. Tiltman jumps in. He has a blink tag of all things. He has a foot of defiance as well. Two man battle strike by animals, stalling things further for Alpha Esports. But never mind, they're still gonna go forward. Find themselves a Skyrath who pops into one and survive for a while longer. I mean, I just feel like I'm the omen for the side of Alpha Esports. Every single time I say they're gonna get a kill, they don't. And now, Axe turning things around with the call. However, there's not enough damage. And now, Animal was a bit confused about who you should go in. Blinks in towards uh, Tidehunter and then Burrow strikes towards Necroforce. While Len picks up the kill for himself. Lost Rider dropping low, but with the Shrine, they should be all okay. And Alpha Esports incurring losses everywhere they go. Oh yeah. They didn't find anything on the back wow. of that. I'm not sure, but I don't think they found a single kill. They... They didn't get the Skyrath Mage. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, Animal? Mid? Yeah, looks like Lexus is gonna get jumped upon, and with the Infest, he's gonna be fine, but Lost Rider just pops it. Whoa. Ends up finding the kill! The Omelet switched off at the worst possible time. And the Whale. And the Whale, and the Whale, indeed. The Ancient Seal as well, if he had to no, add it for good. It was just Whale and one Arcane Bolt. Boy, he just decimates the side of uh, the car. I mean. Not the council, but the Alpha Esports. Really good for council. And Len, he just spots out the Ember Spirit. I mean, he just spots out the Necroforce teeping in. With the help of Animal, they just might end up finding this kill. And Susmoy comes in with the dunk, secures it for his team. Now he's got his blade mail. Now... He's got his blade BKB. No, I was talking about the axe. Susmoy has got his blade mail. Oh, yeah. So probably non-stop action coming out from the council. They're going high ground. Not oh. even bothering with formalities like Roshan. Yeah. Um, Len probably makes a quick base trip. So Smoil looking for the jump once he gets his blade mail probably. Yeah, Viper. He's actually popped his nether tops and does not have enough mana for the Viper strike. So Smoil is gonna jump in. They might just find a kill on the tight on time. Indeed they will. The break, making sure that there's no Kraken shell this spell coming in and Len is gonna pick up another on the back of that. Pinoy Hunter ends up going down as well. What was one kill onto the Necroforce ends up being multiple kills and now Len just jumping forward with the BKB finds the kill on the Shadow Shaman as well. Susmoy jumps in, misses the call, but good game, well played as called by Susmoy. Close call there, buddy. I would not be doing that. Yeah, I think you think um, You just remove your GG well played chat video when you can in a game like this. You just type in GG man. Like it only takes you two seconds at most. So there's nothing uh no chance of problems happening because I mean, of calling GG. I don't know, there, there is a thing with how higher skill players play Dota. I have no binds like you. I have no good game well played. Oh, no Animal, doubt. that battle strike and the Mystic Clip taking down Ask Bankai. The hell, not even needed from the coach. The Ravage, it's massive, but where's the follow up? It's only in the form of more. The save from the help of Pinoy Hunter. Everyone still surviving from the side of the council. Everyone's still healthy. Going up, Death finds himself a double. Four heroes dead. And I think this might be the right time to call GG if you're Alpha Esports. Nyx Assassin, he's gonna get spotted out as well. With the last Arcane Bull, Lost Rider of all people will find himself a triple kill. They only lose Susma on the back of that. Len, he's gonna be happy that his brother was not around. He didn't even need him. <laughs> Pinot Hunter calls the GG well played this time for real. Uh, is it? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Uh, I, I guess so. I guess so. I think G, 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 well, good. I, I think uh, the the no, 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 the, the moral of the story is when you're against Skyrath, make sure you drop damn good lanes. Yeah. I, I think uh, all, all the chaos began from their aggressive trialing coming out from the council and they have no response to that. Anyway, folks, that's it as far as today's Dota 2 broadcast is concerned. My name is Vivek. With me was Floki. We're going to throw it over to the analyst panel. Good night and thank you for tuning in. Alrighty then, all the three games are done. All that's required is the sign off, and that's why I'm here. Well, we'll be back again soon, ladies and gentlemen, with the same set of games as Clash Royale, Counter Strike Global Offensive, and Dota 2. But for today, I think this is more than sufficient. I hope you've enjoyed our stream today. We'll be back again soon. This is the first ever Omen X laptop for gamers that go to extremes. Gear up with a machine designed for total domination and engineered for gaming in stunning 4K. Equipped with the latest Intel Core processors, it gives you the power to be relentless. With a 17.3 inch diagonal screen and desktop class graphics, you get maximum performance to be victorious anywhere. With multiple fans and large exhaust vents, heat is transferred away from critical components for dynamic overclocking. Ramp up boot times, game loading, and overall system responsiveness with optional RAID 0 SSD configurability. An RGB LED backlit mechanical keyboard lets you program each individually lit key to create customized key maps that switch seamlessly between games. With two and a half millimeter travel and in-key rollover, you can take out your competition with more accuracy and precision. Designed for extreme immersion, DTS Headphone X technology comes built in for surround sound experience that puts you right in the middle of the action. With the addition of a VR headset, gamers can step inside a completely immersive world for an elevated gaming experience. Single panel access to key components makes serviceability and upgrading easy so you won't be sidelined or held back on your road to supremacy. It has a brushed aluminum finish on an armor-like chassis. A jet fighter-like construction with hidden lift hinges ensures you're always at the ready. And with striking lighting effects and see-through window to components, others will know too. Unleash your fiercest gameplay anywhere with the extreme performance of the new Omen X laptop.
game, record, and stream without compromise on Intel Core i7.